Hi, what's up everyone? In this video today, we're going to be looking at histograms and cumulative frequency graphs. This is the fourth video in the uh, S1 representation of data series that we've got going here. Okay, histograms, uh, pretty simple definition here. Histogram is a bar chart with no gaps between the bars. Okay, so um, yeah, the bars are touching for a histogram. Really, really important. Uh, if you did IGCSE last year, you will know that when we draw histograms, it is not frequency on the vertical axis. It is frequency density. So you've got to know this formula here. Frequency density is frequency divided by the class width. This is way, way important. So if we go back to the example that we've been using in the other videos about the carbon monoxide levels over a period of a uh, number of days, if we just draw the histogram using frequency, this is what we get. Alright, so um, this looks good to me. We've got a title, the axes are labelled. We've got a smooth scale along the bottom, that's really important. 0 through to 18, so we don't label the individual bars 0 to 2, and stuff like that. So we just have a smooth scale going along here. Okay, here's the problem. In this example here, the interval widths are not the same. So we've got the first two interval widths are two wide, and then the last three are actually four wide. Now here's the problem. Here we've got the six to ten bar here, and we've got the frequency up at 14. So it really looks like we've got six to eight as a frequency of 14, and eight to ten as a frequency of also 14, when you compare it with these other three here. So really, that bar should not be that high. And it's the same with the last ones here. Now we can take care of that distortion, if you like, by using frequency density. Remember the formula, frequency divided by the width of the class. So here we've calculated the frequency densities for this case. So we've just gone, for example, 2 divided by 2 to get the first one, 12 divided by 2, etc. So we've got those frequency densities there. And now I'm going to draw the same histogram, but this time with frequency density. And that's what it looks like. You can see that these last three bars here are now in the right proportion compared with the first three bars. Same thing now, but in this example, we're going to look at group discrete data. So like we did before, the class boundaries are a little bit interesting here. So uh, we've got the number of cars using a car park on 50 different days. So on 25 of the days, there was between... 10 and 19 cars using the car park. Okay, so in order to draw a histogram of this, we are going to use the class boundaries of 0.5 to 4.5. So we're going to basically just bridge that gap between 4 and 5. So we're going to go halfway between. And the class boundaries for this one is going to be 4.5 to 9.5, etc., etc. Now that's important because when you work out the frequency density, it's the frequency divided by the width of the class. So this first one here is not 3 wide. 0.5 to 4.5 is 4 wide. So that's important. So the frequency density for the first class is 6 divided by 4, or 1.5. So I've worked out the four frequency densities for each one. The histogram, when I draw it, it's going to be, the first bar is going to be from 0.5 to 4.5, etc. And here's what the histogram looks like. Here's some good questions to really help us understand these ideas behind the histograms. So here's one where I'm giving you kind of just enough information to be able to complete the histogram here and also complete the table over here on the left. So we're given just enough information. You'll notice that we're given the bar for the 50 to 60 category and we're also given the frequency there. So that's enough information for us to complete the rest. So let me go through how you do this. Remembering that frequency density is frequency divided by the class width. So straight away I know, and this is uh, continuous data here, uh, that the frequency density for this one is 8 divided by 10, the width of the interval, so 0 0.8. So I know straight away that that mark there must be 0.8. Okay, so that's helpful. If that's 0.8 there, straight away I can look at the scale here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
so I know each dash here must be 0.1. Okay, so that's, re that's really going to help us out. So we can now label the scale on the axis. Okay, so I've now drawn in the scale on the frequency density axis. Okay, that one's 0.8, so I've done the rest of those. And now we can get going from there. Uh, if we look at, let's take the previous bar, the 40 to 50 bar, we know now the frequency density is 0.5. Now one thing that's really important about understanding these is, because of the formula, which says the frequency density is the frequency divided by the class width, that means the frequency is the frequency density times the class width. In other words, the area of the bar represents the frequency. Okay, got that? That's important. The area of the bar represents the frequency. So here, 10 times 0.5, which is 5. Okay, so that's how I got the frequency here of 5. For the first one over here, uh, first bar here, 5 times 0.4, which is 2. So the frequency represented by this bar is 2. Now for the drawing in the other bars, for the 60 to 70 group, we've got frequency of 9. So the frequency density is 9 divided by 10, which is 0.9. There we go. Next one, 4 divided by 10, which is 0.4. And the last one, 2 divided by 20, which is 0.1. There we go. So now I can finish off the histogram. Here's a slight variation on that one there. We haven't even got a histogram here. We're just told that for this data here, the height of the 30 to the 40 interval is nine centimeters when we draw a histogram. So always we're talking about frequency density. So here we want to work out the height of the other three columns. Okay, a bit tricky. So let's think about this. The height of this column is nine centimeters. So when we draw a frequency density graph, the frequency density for this one here is going to be 30 divided by 10 is going to be three. So the frequency density is going to be three. So if I unveil those, all those um, frequency densities, that's going to help us out. Okay, so I know that the height is 9 centimetres and the frequency density is 3 centimetres. That means each interval of frequency density represents 3 centimetres on the axis, right? So, for 2.73 on the frequency density, we just have to times that by 3 to get the height. Okay, so it's just a pretty simple relationship. So we just multiply each of these by three to get the heights of the other bars. Here's a picture of what that histogram would look like. You can see for the 30 to 40 bar, the frequency density is three, and we know that that's nine centimeters high. So each unit there must be three centimeters. Here's a similar question that appeared in a recent exam. This one here has grouped discrete data. Well, it's, it's weight, so it's still continuous, but we've got these groupings, 1 to 10, 11 to 20. So remember, if we're looking at the width of the interval here, it would be 0.5 to 10.5, which would be 10 wide, not 9. Okay, so that's important. So when we draw a histogram, uh, scale of 1 centimeter to 1 unit on the vertical axis, which represents frequency density. The 1 to 10 rectangle has a height of 3 centimetres. In other words, the frequency density is 3, because we've got 1 centimetre to 1 unit. Okay, so if the frequency density is 3, that means the frequency, 2x, divided by the width of the interval, which, as I've just said, is 10, is equal to 3. So we get a little equation there, 2x over 10 equals 3, so 2x must be 30, so x has got to be 15, right? That's the value of x. So now we can get the frequencies for all the other values. And in particular, we're interested for this first question about this one at the end here. So x is 15, frequency is 15, the width of this interval, 50.5 to 70.5, is going to be 20 wide. Okay, so that's the, the class width here. So, the frequency density will be 15 divided by 20, which is 0 0.75. And since one unit is 1 centimetres, the height of the 51 to 70 rectangle is 0.75 centimetres. So, we're given the histogram, we just have to fill in the table. So, 
it's pretty easy. Um, once again, just remembering that frequency is the area of the bar. If you remember that, this becomes real easy. So for the first one, the bar width is 2, the height is 10, so this one here is 20. And then it's just a matter of reading off the scale. So for the second one, the width is 2, the height is 22. So that means the frequency for this bar, the 4 to 6 bar, is going to be 44, 2 times 22. And the rest go from there. So it's pretty simple when you recognize how to do this. Second graph in this exercise is the cumulative frequency graph. So we should know how to do these from the IGCSE course. Just so this is just a quick review of what these are. So another name for this is an OGIV, not an OLIVE. That's a spelling mistake. OGIV, O-G-I-V-E. -E. So what we do is for the cumulative frequency, we plot the frequency up to and including the end point of the interval. And you'll see what I mean when I write this out. And we're going to use that to estimate the median and quartiles of the data and the percentiles. So we can answer these kind of questions here. Okay, so up to and including the first interval, we had a frequency of 2. We've got 12 readings in the second interval, so up to and including both those first intervals, we now had 12 plus 2, 14. So we just keep a running tally as we go. 14 plus another 20, 34. 34 plus 14, 48. 48 plus 8, 56. 56 plus 4, 60. So this last value here should be the same as the sum of the frequency column. Okay, that's it. So we just keep a running total of the frequency, and that's the cumulative frequency. Now the graph is just a line graph starting at zero, the first part of this interval, and we're going to plot these values here at the end point of the interval, and that's important. So we're going to put a 2 at 2, 14 at 4, 34 at 6, etc. So here's our cumulative frequency graph. As you can see, it's just a, a line graph of just join the points up with straight lines. Uh, 2 at 2, 4 at 14, etc, etc, etc. So our last one here finishes at 60. Okay, so now we're going to answer the questions about the median and quartiles. The way we do that is the median just take halfway, half of the frequency, half of the cumulative frequency is 30. Go across to the graph and down and read off what you've got. So I've got around about 5.6 there for the median. For the lower quartile, work out a quarter of 60, which is 15. Go across from 15, where you hit the graph, go down. So around about 4.1. Up quartile, 3 quarters of 60, so 45. Across to the graph and down. There's the up quartile, looks pretty much spot on 9. The 90th percentile, that is what value are 90% of the values less than? So 90% of 60, which is 54, go across to the curve and down, looks like about 13.2. So you could say that another way, that what value are 10% of the values above that one? Okay, so the top 10% of readings, in this case, of carbon monoxide level, are above 13.2. The last question asked us how many days uh, in this time period was the carbon monoxide level above 5. So now we go to 5 on the bottom axis, up to the curve and across, and read off the cumulative frequency, which here I've got around about 23. Now you're allowed a margin of error here, so around about 23. So 23 of the days, the the carbon monoxide level was less than 5, so the number of days where the carbon monoxide level was above 5 is 60 minus 23, which is 37, so the other 37 days above there. Now this graph can also be drawn with curved lines, and some people prefer to draw it this way as well. Okay, um, I think that says a little bit about the distribution of the values between the two points, so I like to go for the straight lines but drawing it with a curved line where you just fit the, uh, fit the line according to the points is fine as well.